So next up we have Hilla, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Those Vegan Cowboys, a Belgian company working on vegan cheese products yes. um, and well known in the vegan community, I believe. Um, so it's the thing we're, we're here today to talk about is both how this tech would interact with current agricultural systems and growing a business within the context of a traditional industry. Um, so both very useful lessons for, for growth day here at Upstream. So first off, can you sort of foreground it all by talk, telling us what is some of the headlines on what is wrong with the way we're currently producing dairy products environmentally? Yeah, yeah in fact, well, environmentally, the, well, you, you could, can almost say like what's not wrong about yeah. it. Like if you, if you look at the dairy industry right now, uh, well, I see that it's a very industrial process where the mother cow is only like a little part of the full industry, but actually it's a very inefficient part of the mm -hmm. industry because uh, a mother cow, uh, besides the question if she wants to work or not, uh, produces methane, uh, she drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and the environmental issues we have right now um, yeah, are, are, are caused uh, yeah. mainly, or well, if you look at the food processing part by the dairy industry. Mm. And land use, I guess. Is yes, land use, yeah. 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 And then can enormous. you, because I understand that you have products that are currently on the market and more forward-thinking upcoming products. Can you lay out the yeah, situation sure. in the company at the moment? Yeah, because so we, we are a mission-driven company, so our main goal is to get all the production animals out of the food chain, and we take different approaches. So we think that people will be eating dairy uh, and want to eat dairy for the upcoming 50, 100 years. So, um, but we want to replace it. And we, we, we take different approaches. One of the approaches is that we make cheese with ingredients which you can buy right now into the store. That's um, what we do with our brand Wild Westland. And that's a joint venture of those vegan cowboys together with Westland Cheese, uh, which is mainly known by their brand Old Amsterdam. So there we have a cheese brand mm -hmm. uh, already at Albert Heijn. But what we do at those vegan cowboys, there we make... Um, well, dairy replacements, which are exactly the same as the cheeses mm -hmm. we know right now. And what we do at Those Vegan Cowboys is that we produce casein, which is one of the main proteins to make cheese. Mm. Um, so this is precision fermentation? This is precision fermentation. So what we, we like to um, um, tell the story with... Uh, the analogy of a stainless steel cow. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we feed a stainless steel cow just like we feed the mother cow and then this stainless steel cow gives us casein just as the mother cow gives us milk where we extract the casein. So we take a, diff we take a direct approach mm -hmm. without the living cow but in the end, the casein we make is exactly the same okay. as the casein we use as the main protein for all the cheeses we make. So with this casein, we can make the yellow cheeses, we can make roquefort, we can make parmesan, and you will not notice the mm. difference, except that um, you can eat this cheese uh, without feeling guilty mm. um, because it's very well it's not still good for the environment but if you would compare it with cheese making with the mother cow it's uh, you only have to use one fifth of the land okay. you only need one fifth of the water and um, you well can set the cow free so you don't have the issues with calves being separated from the mother uh, or uh, the living cows who need to run the marathon every day. Can you, perhaps it's useful for people, can you explain to us what a precision fermentation building, what does this actually look like? Well, if it, our stainless steel cow is in real life a fermenter. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a big machine where we put in the grass and then in this machine there are microbes, just like in the 
with the same that happens inside of the cow. Mm. And um, the, the combination of the microbes together with the grass, the grass, it's a um, well, scientific process, a little bit comparable with brewing beer. Okay. And um, yeah, then in the end you get the casein. Yeah. But we're doing this in a laboratory. Okay. So that's the setting where we make the casein. Because from what I understand, you're not yet able to sell these products, at least yeah. in the European Union. Potentially. Yes. Can you do it in Singapore yet? That's what Almost. some things are. Yeah. Can yeah. you explain to us the timeline of when you think you'll get something like that on the um, shelves? Okay, we are now able to produce casein on a very small scale. We made our first cheeses, but you have to think of cheeses which are, well, this size. So what we need to do is scale up in the next three years. That's our main, uh, th that's the main thing we need to do. Besides that, because it's a novel food, because it's a new type of food, we need to go through a regulatory process in, in Europe. So you have to prove that your food is safe. And of course, that's a really good thing that we need to do that. But that will probably also take about three years. Okay. So we expect um, to bring our cheeses to the market within three years. But In, in yeah. the EU? Or in the EU, okay. yeah. Yeah. And if you look at, uh, well, the regulatory part, it's way easier to go to the market, for example, in Singapore or the mm. U US. So it might be the case that we uh, will launch first in the US or Singapore, uh, but it kind of depends on what kind of partnerships we mm -hmm. will uh, get in the upcoming years. Okay, interesting. Do you, and, uh, do you think that, because I imagine that... Uh, advertising and branding something like that could be potentially a bit of a minefield can you what do you think you can call it do you think consumers will understand and be receptive to the product how are you thinking about that yeah so um, well we actually think it will be quite easy okay um because when we tell the story to people and we in branding, if you talk about marketing and communication, we use uh, the analogy of the stainless steel cow. It's a pretty easy story to tell because mm -hmm. people, well, can if, if you tell this cheese is from a laboratory somewhere down in Belgium at a university, mm -hmm. then you don't think, hmm, nice, good taste. But if you tell the story, this cheese is made by the stainless steel cow, you don't have the hassle with the animals. Uh, it's exactly the same. Yeah. As uh, you, you will not notice the difference. I don't think there is anyone who will say, give me the piece of cheese where uh, all the cows are harmed and uh, the environment, the, 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 well, it's, 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 it's uh, not too good for the environment. Yeah, that's true. I guess it is all about storytelling, isn't it? Yeah. And can you, because in, say, 20 years, what do you picture our dairy industry looking like? As in, is this about entirely replacing traditional yes. farming, or do you see a place for no. both? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least from my point of view, mm -hmm. personal of view, I'm from a farmer's family. Uh, our CEO is also from a farmer's family. I have a lot of dairy farmers in the family, so I'm not against them. I love them very, very, very much. But if I just think of it, if there is a way to produce the, the same dairy, uh, but in a much better way, I, I don't see any reason why we should keep the animals. What's, and what's, even in my, my family where the dairy farmers are, and I really hope that my cousins uh, will be able to stay working on the farm, but they can work with the stainless steel cow. It's, it's, yeah, it's just another future. But still, like the yeah. future on the farm. What's the reaction like from your family or other farmers you encounter? Mm, if you if you talk to them one on one, it's very positive. Okay. And uh, of course, I do get critical questions at mm. parties in my in my family. But if you talk to farmers one on one, the, re the response is really good. Mm. Um, if you don't talk to people, but if you just hear the rumors, then sometimes it is another story. Because, okay. of course, we are a threat 
to traditional dairy farmer. Mm. Yeah. And on the subject of growth, which is the theme of today, um, what lessons have you learned from growing a very new industry within the context of a very old one? Uh, work together with the old one. Mm -hmm. So we have a legacy company, it's called the Vegetarian Butcher. Maybe some of you know this company. And we, what we learned at the, the Vegetarian Butcher is that you work if you work together with the traditional industry, it will take you further. So what the Vegetarian Butcher did was working together with meat brands like Mora. Uh, if, if you're Dutch, then maybe you know it. And... Um, that's what we will do as those vegan cowboys as well. So we, we love to work together with farmers and farmer corporations. We do work together with farmers and farmer corporations. We do already work together with the dairy industry, mm -hmm. with Westland Cheese, for example, and we're talking to the big dairy players to, to work together. Okay. So, but again, that's also because we are a mission-driven company and we would like to change mm -hmm. Uh, th this field so that's yeah. why we're doing this on purpose yeah. and what about outside of your kind of end product what lessons would you have for people on branding and marketing reach because I think you guys have a fun a yeah. fun brand are there lessons you could share for people on that side of things okay yeah that's well with us uh, and also the vegetarian butcher if you know it it's well known it was well known it's still well known for their branding but um we, we, we quite often get the question like, which agency are you working with? But to be honest, marketing is done by 0 0.8 FTE in our company. And it's me with another lady. And that was also the case with the vegetarian butcher where only one person was working on it. And we do come up with the names and all the uh, visuals ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we just have great fun with it. And um, I think the most important is that you tell a true story, like the, the, the story of those vegan cowboys. It is the story of our founders. Uh, well, the stainless steel cow, she is in our laboratory. Mm. So if you, um, it's, it's quite easy to tell the story. If you have to think about your branding or what will be the name or what, if you have to think about it too long, then come up with another idea. We, we do yep. all our branding like within one hour or wow. so. Yeah. Well, you're doing a good job, yeah. Yeah. I think. Do we have questions from the audience? We've got a bit of time for that. Let me chuck this to you. Oh, Ooh. sorry. I feel like I'm going to kill someone by the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I, I have a few questions. Uh, no, just one question on... on so I'm, I'm also from a venture uh, that work with a very traditional um, conservative um, customer who already have a, a ways of working on their own and then when we talk about new technology they always feel very hesitant to actually get into the conversation so how do you open their mind up to have the conversation they need to have and to be more open about you know your standard steel cow yeah. what, what would be the first step I mean that that's where we usually get stuck we cannot get into the door if we cannot get through the door, we, we cannot have a conversation with them. Yeah. So we're lucky to have um, a product you can taste. So we don't have to tell too much, but we can just give someone a cheese. And then I think one thing what will help us is that we work together with those well-known cheese brands. So we're working together with Westland Cheese. And of course, we hope to make an old Amsterdam cheese, which is really known uh, by the traditional cheese eater and if you give him or her the, the old Amsterdam cheese and it tastes exactly the same as he or she is used to then I think you have like an easy conversation well at least that's what I think But and I have one follow up question on that um, so um, let's say in order for them to change into the new uh, production process they, they potentially have to put in some investment and those investments will take some time to realize. So, so what would be the next step and what, what would you use to kind of persuade them to change into that considering that it might take some time to get back the investment? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, 
Well, what this is, well, we have a legacy company, and this company is sold to Unilever. So uh, financially, we know we are good for the first seven years. So that's like very relaxing, and so we're good. Uh, so, for example, now we are slowly talking to the first investors, and well, what we are looking for is very is a strategic partner. So not really a partner that brings in only money, because that's for us actually really easy. Like when we started the company, the first uh, VC company already called like, can I invest? Which was really, mm. we were like, why, why? We haven't done anything. But that's, that's because you, you already did a good job once and everyone es expects you to do a great job again, which is by the way, well, we we sh we need to see that if that's reality in the end. So um, like like for now because we don't need it right now, but we kind of see it that we will need it in the upcoming years because then we scale up and you need to build plants and of course that's a uh, costly business and. Um, but for us, we, yeah, we are for fortunate to have a successful uh, legacy company, so mm -hmm. that's not too difficult for us. Do we have, I think we can take one more, I oh, know we can't take one more question, but maybe are you sticking around for a bit at the event? Sorry? Are you going to be here for a bit Could yeah, people, sure. so people yeah. can catch you yeah. if they want to ask more yeah, questions? they can catch me. Um, Don't throw the thing at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But cool, thank you, that was really interesting. I love yeah. the stainless steel cows analogy, yeah. I think that's really good. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank so you. So we're, we're back in 15 minutes, um, or slightly slightly sooner than that, where we'll be talking about international expansion and tips on, on how to do that, a big topic. But yeah, so we're back here in 15 minutes. Thank you very much, so that was great.